Hi, my name is Jesse. I'm at the BA Test Kitchen today to have a super secret conversation about Chris Morocco. Once again, we're putting Chris's super taster ability to the test. This is Kenji Lopez All's Tanda Noodles. I'm challenging Chris to recreate this dish with all of the ingredients in just one day. He will be able to taste it, touch it, and smell it, but to really put his skills to the test, at no point will he be able to see this dish. At the end of the day, we'll come back to see his final creation, and I'll be the judge. Wow. Some real punchy stuff happening. Seemed like garlic, ginger, maybe something kind of like clean and herbal, like a scallion or something on top of it. Wow, oh, it's like a piece of chili, but like maybe riding in on a really super crispy nubbin of pork or something, or some other ground meat. Oh, there's so many pieces. I just got a piece of peanut. Very sharp scallion, I think. Sharp as in like raw onion bite. These meat nubbins have so much texture and are packed with so much flavor. This is like a jackknife semi, kind of like going right across the highway, you know, where you just like, you see the flashing lights and you're just like, oh shit, we're not going anywhere for a couple of hours. There's a lot of fat in here. Like, I feel like there's like a good amount of oil. There's a lot of brightness. There's definitely some Szechuan peppercorn. I'm getting a distinct numbing sensation uh, in my palate. It's somewhere between like vinegar and wine, like rice vinegar or black vinegar. This is like a very fast, you know, kind of style dish. I think it's like coming together in a skillet very quickly or in a wok. And I don't think you know, most chefs who'd be cooking this style of dish would be also making the noodles from scratch themselves. Rice noodles, even when they're toothsome, tend to have like a little bit more of like a velvety texture. I assume like these noodles are being finished, you know, in a wok or in a skillet. They still have a lot of softness and springiness. It doesn't feel like the intention of the dish was to kind of brown them. To me, this is Dan Dan noodles. Dan Dan noodles comes from the Sichuan province of China, but this is some individual's interpretation of that dish. And it's not an interpretation that I've had before. So I, I mean, I couldn't even begin to guess at who created it. I think that's about as far as I can go, just sort of talking out loud with a sloth blindfold on. I'm trying to break down the components of this dish in my mind. Cooking off the noodles, the pork mixture, and then I think scallion and peanut needs to go over the top as well. I think we need to try a few different types of vinegar. Like I want to try black vinegar. I want to try rice vinegar, garlic, ginger, sugar as an option just for building up the sweetness of that pork mixture. I think like we need ground pork. We need dried red, I'm gonna say like dried red whole chilies. And then the noodles themselves, you know, I'm looking for a thin wheat-based noodle. And then I think scallion and peanut go needs to go over the top as well. Our team is gonna go shop for these ingredients. Sadly, no grocery cart riding today. And then I will have my first shot of the dish. I'm gonna be trying this a few different ways and then arriving hopefully in one clean direction to go in for the first judging. So we're gonna do some fine chop uh, garlic. So this is gonna be for the aromatic base that's gonna go with the pork. Ginger, pretty confident I smelled it. Then scallion. So I'm gonna cook the ramen noodles first and the lo mein noodles and see which one seems better. I'm terrible at using a wok, you know, using it well is a skill. The way you move foods around in it. Chili flake, Szechuan, black vinegar. The question is, do I need to pull this to the side or should the noodles just go in there? Shit, I don't know. It feels weird not to put the noodles in there. I'm just going for it. All right, well, that got a little bit crispy and weird. So this is not even the first version like that I'm gonna 
submit for critique. This is like version half. I have enough time to make this at least one more time. So I'm gonna taste this, see what adjustments I wanna make, hopefully make it even better before the first judging. A Little bit of a pore showing. The flavors are feeling a little bit muted to me. While the overall construction of the dish feels very similar to what the original was in my mind, I need more flavor here. That sensation that I had with the original of having like almost like a vinaigrette, if you will, you know, dressing the noodles, that is not present here. Also, the ramen noodles, they're a little bit clingy. I wanna try the lo mein noodles and see if they feel like a little bit more separate and distinct from each other. Also, we talked about like that sensation of like having like, you know, fat or liquid kind of coat your fingers. It's not really present here. I think I can kind of go heavier on just about everything. I'm gonna do another one that will submit for version one. We're gonna do lo mein noodles this time. I was getting a certain kind of stickiness from the ramen noodle. I mean, sometimes I think they do kind of function a bit better in liquid than they do dry. So the intention I have is to sprinkle some of the Szechuan peppercorn into the pork mixture. And the question in my mind is, is that enough to bloom its flavor or do you need to toast it beforehand? Bloom just means like you're activating the natural aromatics and oils inside the spice. So you're kind of developing its flavor. Um, I don't know, I guess I'm gonna try just sprinkling it into the pork and see what happens. Let's go for it. So first I'm just toasting Szechuan peppercorn dry. All right, these are just lightly smoking off to the side. Noodles can go in. I'm gonna go a little heavier on oil this time. I really felt like there was an oily coating in the original dish that was missing. Ground pork. All right. All right, so I'm gonna double ginger and I'm gonna double the garlic. So two teaspoons of each. More flavor, more better. Half teaspoon of Szechuan. And I'm going with more of a teaspoon of chili flake. Even for how hot that chili flake was, really got lost in there, all those other flavors. Leaving the chili in a little bit longer will improve its flavor up to a point, but when it toasts, it's gonna get bitter. All right, one thing I'm also gonna do is, so I used two tablespoons of the black vinegar before. I'm gonna do two tablespoons of black vinegar plus a tablespoon of seasoned rice vinegar. Seasoned rice vinegar is rice vinegar, but it's got salt and sugar added to it. Just the chopped peanut and scallion. I think we can call this version 1.0. So you definitely do not taste the vinegar on the meat. You do, however, taste it on the noodles. So that's at least something. Flavors are good. Balance is good. Missing some texture on the pork. For ingredients, if I mean, I'm gonna say 70%. It doesn't feel like the original dish and it's kind of escaping me why. There is a consistency to the kind of saucy coating on the noodles in the original dish that it feels a little bit like a vinaigrette, you know? That is very vexing to me. Technique, again, 70% maybe. I think things could be done in a different order. I also think, you know, the Szechuan peppercorn and the chili could frankly be its own component, you know, like as a chili oil or something. Where are the noodles going and what point? That that feels very opaque to me here. Appearance, I mean, this kind of matches what I was thinking in my mind. Maybe the meat needs to little, be a little bit darker, browner, more like kind of crunchy, but 85? I'd say flavor-wise, maybe we're at 80%. So in a very exciting break from previous format, I will actually be receiving my actual scores for this round's development right now. I won't necessarily know what I need to change, but I'll know the area in which I might be looking at a bit of a deficit. My actual scores, in addition to the scores I've just given myself, are on this card. All right. Ah, uh, okay. Ooh. Uh. Uh, 
Uh, what is very interesting to me is that I gave myself an average of a 76. And in fact, I am averaging a 76. I will have another chance to taste the original dish and then I'll have a final chance to cook the version that ultimately has to be presented to the judge. When you smell the like, the vinegary something coming off of this, it's so aromatic with the Szechuan peppercorn. The noodles are more kind of like clumped against each other feel somewhat distinct from the pork mixture. What I learned here is that I really need to be willing to potentially go with what I'm tasting, which is that the noodles maybe never even went to the wok at all, that they have um, their own kind of dedicated sauce or kind of dressing that might have a base of chili oil with it. Pork really needs to be very crispy need to take that a little bit further. I'm good with this tasting. I'm ready to cook my final version of the dish. Ha! Wow. <laughs> my work here is done. All right, we need to make some chili oil. The thing that defines chili oil is just chilies and oil heated together. A house chili oil for a given restaurant might include like, you know, 15 ingredients, but not in such great quantities as to really like influence the outcome of a dish like this. So we're gonna do chilies, Szechuan peppercorns. No need to toast the Szechuan peppercorns for this because they'll effectively be bloomed in the oil. I think the garnish for the dish could be Szechuan peppercorns. I also think the garnish for the dish could be like an additional like drizzle of chili oil. I'm leaning much more on chili oil because a finishing drizzle of that oil and the solids in it on top of the dish could explain why I had, you know, kind of crispy Szechuan peppercorn and crispy bits of chili on top of the dish. I might have initially read them as being part of the pork, but they could be part of this instead. I'm not making a ton of oil. I just want to bring it up till it sizzles. But I don't want to push this too hard. I want to develop that flavor and I want to intensify the textures a little bit, but I'm not looking for anything to brown here. It smells super aromatic, a little toasty. I mean, I'm good with that. I think we can kind of cool that down. So these chilies have a lot of heat, not necessarily a lot of color, which is fine. We've got some like kind of nice crispy bits in there. I feel like this is gonna do well. We need to figure out like, are we actually using black vinegar? in the pork still. I don't know, it's so funny. Like suddenly in the second tasting, I got so much more like vinegar notes from the noodle and so much less of that kind of whiny, bright, fruity, you know, kind of acidity from the pork. Like these things have kind of like started to flip flop in my mind a little bit about where, where certain flavors are coming from. Soy sauce, seasoned rice vinegar, black vinegar, and chili oil. So that's my dressing for the noodles. It's building saltiness and a little bit of um, umami. Now it's just down to the pork. It tasted like slightly vegetal. It tasted sweet, I want to say, or at least like some sweetness was clinging to it. The way like a shallot kind of gets jammy and sweet once it's cooked. I mean, the, the other thought that occurred to me at the time was, you know, could that just be some scallion that's cooked in with the pork? that has softened, bringing out its sweetness, tempering its raw bite, and giving me the illusion of, uh, you know, a kind of jammy shallot in there. Let's take this show over to the stove. All right, noodles are in. So sticking with lo mein noodles. I like the way that the lo mein noodle stays a little bit separate. The ramen noodles had a tendency to really cling sort of work as almost a solid mass. The lo mein kind of felt a little bit more distinct. Pork, staying doubled up on garlic and ginger relative to the first pass I made. I'm gonna do the addition of scallion here, because why not? And I'm also gonna do a little pinch of sugar, because it. I'm gonna do a touch of soy sauce in here. It feels like it's gonna want a touch of seasoning I really want to like increase that sensation of it being kind of like caramelized and super developed. So noodles are coming out, getting drained. 
So noodles are going into the dressing here. I mean, the flavor's nice. I mean, it's, it's, I feel like we're sort of the closest we've come here. I'm putting the pork just on top here. Highly seasoned, aromatic pork mixture. I wanna make sure I get some crispy bits in here. The Szechuan peppercorn. It's a little like extra texture, chopped peanut. Finally, the scallion. All right, well, that's version two. I think I want to believe that I got closer. I don't really know that we stuck the landing on this one. In this version, we've introduced soy sauce. We reintroduced sugar. Is there any other completely new ingredient here? I don't believe so. I'd say like maybe ingredient wise, I'm at like 80 now. Technique, that is where I suffered the most. Like, let's be optimistic and like say that maybe I'm like pulling up to like a 75 here. Appearance, we were high with appearance. I'd say like we're at 90% now. Taste, I'd, I'd say like I'm comfortably around like 85 now, I would say. That puts me at an 83 average for myself scoring. I mean, I would take it. This is something I still have so many questions about, but it is nonetheless the version I have to submit to the judge. So I am looking forward to hearing what's actually going on. Hi, Chris. Jesse, how's it going? Good, how did it go for you? For a dish that takes a surprisingly short amount of time to cook, it felt like a very long day to me. <laughs> Do you have any idea of like what this dish might be? I think this is Dan Dan noodles. It's a dish that I have a little bit of familiarity with, but not a lot. And I don't know that I've ever made it. No guess as to the chef, really. May I present you Kenji Lopezel's Danda noodles. Ah, Kenji! <laughs> I mean, when it's Kenji, I feel like it's like no holds barred. He will stop at nothing to achieve the result that he's looking for. Mm -hmm. He will employ any method in service of like creating whatever it is. I mean, it looks pretty much identical to me, apparent wise, right? Yeah, there's a little extra sauciness here. I didn't, I really couldn't discern like that oil on the plate. Mm -hmm. You could tell that there was a, this kind of oily coating on things, mm -hmm. but interesting. Look at the crispiness of what I assume is pork. It is pork. You get that right. Well, I got one point. So you got a lot of the ingredients right, but some of them are in the wrong places. Okay. And for example, I think garlic is a big thing. Interesting. So the garlic it belongs in the dressing or in the chili oil? It belongs in the dressing, so it's not cooked. And also uh, it got finished a little bit with raw braided garlic. Really? Yeah. So it should have like wow. a little punch from the raw garlic. I think the big missing piece was the um, Sichuan preserved vegetables. Shoot, I don't even know about this. I've never tried it before. Is this like a jar that I can take home yeah, now? Yeah, I believe so. It's like my souvenir for the yes. day. So for ingredients, mm -hmm. you gave yourself 80. I'm gonna give you 81. Okay. <laughs> I think you did pretty well. I would expect you to get the garlic raw, then Interesting. cooked. Yeah, okay. And for technique, you gave yourself 75. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you 73. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, a lot of ingredients in the wrong places. So you are right about making a chili oil and then how that goes to the vinaigrette. Right? Okay, okay. I mean, that's cool. And another thing about technique is for this version, the noodle is just finished on the plate. It, it didn't get tossed oh, and wow. then get plated. Um, and in your version, you kind of toss everything first and then plate. Wow. You guys are like knives out today. It's fine. <laughs> I see how it is. Cool. And for appearance, you gave yourself 90. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you 95. I think they I look- I knew I liked you, Jesse. <laughs> yeah. We're yeah, back. they look pretty much identical to me. Yeah, exactly. Right? That's what exactly I was saying. Exactly the same. And the toppings, like visual okay. toppings, are very on point. So that just leaves taste. Shall we taste it? Flavors are a little bit more muted. Mm -hmm. Everything could just be 
turned up about like 20% here mm -hmm. relative to like where it is. Mm -hmm. And the noodles could have been a little bit, you know, a little bit chewier. Mm. For something with raw garlic, there's so many other competing and perhaps even louder flavors to me. It doesn't really stand out that much. I understand that. You said you understood it. You didn't <laughs> say that you agreed. For the score of the tasting, you gave yourself 85. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you 81. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, those four I points burn. It's just missing that punch from the preserved vegetable and the raw garlic. That's fair. I mean, it's certainly off, you know, the original. In both rounds, you really accurately assess your scores. So... I mean, that's safe to say that's never happened before. I'm going to give you 100 on scoring yourself. You did amazing, <laughs> amazing on that. So in the non-existent <laughs> category, I get 100. And I'm honestly walking away from this one feeling pretty good. Now I'll have my preserved vegetables to screw around with at home for the next few weeks. Yeah. And who knows, maybe I'll get it next time, right? Thank you so much for hanging around. Thank you for having me. I caught some breaks. The raw garlic, so be it, okay. The preserved vegetables, didn't know that that was a thing. A little bit older, a little bit wiser, certainly a lot grayer. Just because you think you might know the dish, doesn't mean you have any idea how a given chef has chosen to interpret it and put it together. This was like textbook case of that. I'm good on this one, but fair play to you, Kenji.